Hello, and welcome to Log Rocket. <laughs> um, today I'm here with Matteo Colina, who is Chief Software Architect at Nearform, Lead Maintainer at Fastify, member of Node's Technical Steering Committee, and a collaborator on Pino. I created both Pino and Fastify, so yay. Oh, it cr okay, creator. Yeah. So I, I, my apologies. Well, quite a list of um, responsibilities and roles and titles, and I am excited to learn about all of them today. Um, which one do you want to start with? Oh, uh, I don't know. I can. Uh, uh, we can start with Ruby or Rails. No, I'm joking. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or Java. I don't know. No, Java. You know, uh, Java yeah. and PHP yeah. and C. Basic maybe. Let's go to basic. Mm. Starting basic. Let's start from the basic, from the starting basic <laughs> that I was doing when I was a kid. Okay. No. Let's let's jump a little bit of years. Jump uni. Jump a lot of stuff. Um, I started using Node.js since uh, putting Node.js in production since Node 0.2, those, those era. I call myself a second generation Node person, as, as what it mm. would call it. Um, and then uh, since then, I've been mass gaining massive experience on how to uh, build and fine tune and make sure uh, Node.js application runs well in production. The... Uh, uh, because of that, okay, I ended up accumulating a lot of, uh, uh, as I'd say, responsibility in the Node.js, in the Node.js community and in the Node.js ecosystem from the uh, from Node.js itself to a lot of modules. Like I, I don't know. I think uh, I don't want to to boast too much, but uh, I am like my modules have are downloaded something around. I don't know some tens of millions of time per month or something like that. So it's, uh, yeah, no, I think it's 60 billion per year, probably something. I, I'll get the numbers very crazy. Like, I, I, I'm one of the most uh, downloaded authors on, on NPM. So stuff that I, I wrote or stuff that I maintain, stuff like that, things like that, okay? Yeah, no, I am, um, yeah, I have a big chunk of responsibility. Um, I want to start about Fastify, talking about a little bit about Fastify, even though it's the latest one to some extent. Okay, Pino was created earlier. So uh, uh, Fastify, Fastify is a web framework for Node.js. It's uh, really modern. It's built to use the latest and the greatest of the Fastify of the of the JavaScript world. So yeah, no, it's it's really it's really nice. It's growing a lot in the community. So it's actually uh, becoming, it's actually moving pretty fast now. So it's, um, we have been increasing the, growing the download numbers significantly over the last, uh, over the last few years, over the last couple of years has been moving from a few hundred thousand to more than a million point, 1.8 millions per month. Like it was a downloads per month. So it's, it's been like, um, is getting very popular very quickly. So I am really happy. We recently, there was recently the state of JavaScript, uh, state of JS uh, uh, survey, and it was uh, uh, ranked as the, uh, the framework with the highest satisfaction across the backend only frameworks. So the other ones were all like, oh, React and full stack or something. So it's, uh, it's uh, you know, uh, it's not. It does not the same job as Next.js or Astro or SvelteKit or whatever. It's it's a it's a system to build uh, microservice and APIs. Yeah. So yeah, just to give you a hint of um, like in January, uh, my I ranked uh, 1.2 billion downloads of all my modules. Just to give you the the, the numbers. Okay. Um, on average, it's around 60 million per day during each day of the work week. So just to give you the it's the number. It's yeah. If I can get a micro cent for each one of them, I will be very well off. You see. So what you're saying is that if someone were to hack your GitHub credentials, they could distribute malicious code. A lot to of, of malware. Yeah, no, <laughs> a lot yeah. of malware. Literally, literally a lot of malware. So it's uh, which is cool, but not so cool for my for my npm permission. So. It's uh, I have plenty of two FA, so good luck with that. But uh, um, it's pretty great. So um, yeah, that's that's what it is. Fastify. You can check it out. Fastify.io. I am. We are actually in the process of shipping the new major version. So it's uh, you know, this V3, which has been around for a couple of years. We are going to ship V4 soon. Probably the I would 
while when you are listening to this, you are first alpha release candidate will be out. So we'll see when that happens, but hopefully soon. Well, I'm excited to understand it in a bit more. So I'm curious, like when I when I think of a quote unquote backend only framework, uh, Express comes to mind. I've, I've used that a little bit in the past. So help me understand, like how does Fastify compare to Express in terms of like how you use it, what you use it for, performance. Okay, um, so uh, Express is uh, it uh, it it comes as minimalistic. Okay, it says it in the in the it says on the tin. It's a minimalistic framework. Okay, it does the minimal thing that you need. However, you need to do way more for each one of the. If you are building an API, you need to do way more than that. Okay, uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about the free, the fundamental things that 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 are missing. The first one that is extremely important to me is validation. You always need to validate your inputs. Now, if you don't validate your inputs, you are in big, big trouble. But big trouble, big time. Okay, just to be clear, it's it's not that uh, easy if you start now to validate your inputs. What the heck? Okay. Um, by the way, most the developers that I met do not validate their inputs on their API endpoints. So I'm just like, you know, this is the security of the the the, the community. Okay. Which also means that I could probe they are probably vulnerable to very bad prototyping uh, prototype poisoning attacks. Um, if you are using Express, you it does not protect you against prototype poisoning attacks, for example, as one of the topics. Okay, make up your decisions here. So uh, prototype poisoning attacks are pretty bad, by the way. It's uh, they can crash you easily or or worse. Anyway, uh, it's not a prototype pollution; it's prototype poisoning, which is a different type of attack. Anyway, there is a good piece of documentation on, on the Fastify website for this. Uh, so the first one is, uh, that is one of the critical ones. The second one that I want to talk about is uh, logging. Fastify embeds a logger. It makes that decision for you. Okay, um, Logging is one of the top uh, bottlenecks in, in all Node.js applications. So if you don't do it correctly, you are probably screwed. Uh, therefore, you will log use, uh, and this is one of the links with Pino, which is uh, the library that I built before. So it's uh, um, which is a, a f the fastest logger for Node.js, the fastest JSON logger for Node.js. Um, it's great. So uh, you see that the, the, there is a trend here, um, and if you don't log in correctly, that will destroy the performance of your systems. Therefore, you are in big trouble. Therefore, uh, we do that choice for you. Okay, it's not a choice that uh, uh, a developer, uh, the, you know, it's, it's a choice that a developer should not be make uh, if you're using a web framework. Okay, it's, it's such, it's so tied with the framework itself, with how the framework works that if, you know, there is a quite fundamental questions that you need to you need to answer. Um, last but not least, uh, uh, Express does a lot of uh, monkey patching on the prototypes to work on top of a node. Uh, this is bad for performance. Uh, Fastify does not do that. It adopts a lifecycle model, so it does not need to monkey patch anything on the node core uh, objects. Uh, it's also one of the reasons why it is faster, not the only one, but this is one of the fundamental, one of, one of the key reasons. It also means that it's, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, it also means that, you know, certain things are a little bit easier, certain things are a little bit harder than Express, depends. Okay? Um, and, well, one of the nicest bits, though, is that Fastify allows you to have a concept of plugins and the encapsulated plugins. So you can actually add, uh, uh, constrain the functionality, constrain your app in in, in certain groups, in in, in sub apps, okay. That then you can take and migrate to microservices or lambdas if you want. So it can allow you to slowly um, separate the concerns of your applications without building a single big ball of mud. Uh, uh, one of the difference between Express and Fastify is that Fastify use a deterministic routing algorithm. Which is uh, uh, it uses a radix uh, tree to uh, 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 to structure your routes. 
uh, while express iterates over a list of regular expressions. This means that at some point, the, the, the gap, after so many routes, the gap between uh, the, uh, the, the, the other one is so bad that it's not, that, you know, the performance will quickly go down. The, will quickly go down the, will quickly decrease because of, you know, how many regular expressions you need to check before eating your, your route. Um, also, the middleware pattern is pretty heavy to implement in terms of overhead. And uh, by getting away with a life cycle model, uh, 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 it's, it's actually way faster to for certain things. So that's it. Got it. So it sounds like the, the benefits are certainly performance. Um, and also, I guess, would it be accurate to say a bit more opinionated about some of the questions around yeah. like structuring your application and yes. um, common patterns like middlewares? Yes. Also, you have, uh, uh, for example, um, the concept of plugins. It's uh, way more articulated. So you can, uh, you know, um, plugins are... So in in fast in in Express everything is a middleware, so you need to register your middleware. So you end up having thirty to fifty middlewares, and uh, uh, those middlewares though are always called every single time you pass through a request receives it. So this results in a hundred hundred and fifty calls function in a call stack before reaching your application. This is pretty heavy. With thanks to Fastify plugin system, decorators and hooks, you can actually have implement most of the same flexibility without having uh, to pay this huge performance cost. So you can have the great developer experience without compromising on performance, which is um, a greatest uh, a greatest achievement for us. Does Fastify have an opinion on ORM or is that kind of outside the scope of what Fastify uh, So it's, let, I have an opinion. Fastify <laughs> is Fastify does not Fastify does not say anything. Okay, I do have an opinion. Okay, I'm anti ORM as much as anti ORM. Person, okay, as much as a person could be. Um, the fundamental reason it's uh, um, ORMs helps a lot in the eighty percent of an application that's very easy to implement, and it makes the rest twenty percent extremely harder to do. Therefore. If, uh, but however, the last twenty percent is where you you spend most of your time. So you are actually simplifying stuff that is already simple but repetitive, to make stuff that's hard even harder. It does not like unless you are building copycat applications that are very crude based type of stuff all the time. It does not you know for complex business interactions and things like that. Complex business flows when you have complex data that you need to manage does not sound correct to me. Like if I need to go fast, I prefer to use something like Azura, uh, in, in which is, uh, you know, it just gives me a GraphQL endpoint and I just connect a SPA and I'm good. Okay. Like I'm not even dealing with writing a backend system to some extent. Um, Prisma, it's a good thing in between. So I kind of like Prisma. Um, because it enables, uh, it, it has a very good migration system and it enables to do um, a few nice things that otherwise would not be uh, as easy. So if somebody wanted, I would say, well, let's use Prisma, okay? Uh, but in most of the time, I'm just not using anything. Like I, I personally, when I need to code something, I'm not, I recommend not to use anything because I've been scarred too many times before since the days of Hibernate, you know, unless I, I told you that we we're going back talking about Java. So since I was, I had some bad Hibernate scars on my back, and I don't want to go there to, to go near. And Ruby on Rails too. You see, the only good ORM that I ever used is Active Record in Ruby on Rails. So again, as I told you, we were going back to uh, both Active Record and with both Ruby on Rails and Java. I, I started this. I have a hand, you know. For some reason, I had an idea where the direction of this cache would have gone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm curious. You say so. You're saying the 80 percent the application that's already easy to build is where the ORM helps, and the 20 percent is where it makes it more difficult. What do you see as that? Like, what's the 80 percent? What's the 20 percent? 
You, well, like like, whenever yeah. you, the, most of the, the vast majority of building an application is doing CRUD. So reading, st reading, updating, saving, deleting, all those things, okay? That's repetitive to do, okay? Once you have implemented for the, do for the, for the dog uh, table, you could implement it for the cat table. And to be honest, the code would not be much difference. Okay, so an ORM, it actually makes a lot of sense uh, for, 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 for if you only have to deal with cats and dogs, okay? However, if you want to build a system where you want to respond uh, on a query of how many of those cats are in a radius of uh, 50 miles, then things start getting a little bit more complicated, okay? For example, and you need to go into the, oh, how does this ORM handle geospatial data? Coach, that doesn't do that. How can we do it? Oh, well, we need to go down and go one level below and start doing, and start understanding how to interact with the ORM in the first place to be able to, but because everybody, every else, everything else on our system actually wants the, the data, the objects from our ORM, right? Because that's where, what the pop wants the model now. And oh, now I need to run this custom SQL query, make sure that my ORM, put it into my ORM, get the objects, so that I can move them uh, to the rest of the it's become very brittle and very complicated. So I prefer not to, and I prefer to say, e just move around pure Java, plain JavaScript objects and just not forget about those complex models stuff and uh, just forget them. And uh, if you need to touch the database, just do a SQL query or a MongoDB query or a Redis uh, command or, what, or a Dynamo command, whatever you're using and just uh, uh, use the native drivers. I'm curious to go back to an earlier comment you made that logging is one of the most, or I don't know if you say the most, or a common bottleneck in node applications. I'm curious to understand that a bit more. Like, What does that mean and why? Okay, so it is, let's, let's consider this, 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 this problem, okay? You are a, C, a, a, node, a node server receive an HTTP request and produces an HTTP response, okay? In order to, to handle many of those, it needs to be really fast in, many, in, in receiving them and sending them out. All right. So that's the, the, that's the theory, okay? However, there is one catch in this thing, okay? Those things are also have side effects, otherwise we won't do them. If it's just an hello word, probably not very useful. So the reason why we are doing these requests is because they have some side effects so that they change some state, okay? So uh, they will probably touch a database, something like that, and hopefully they will log something to standard output or, or a file or somewhere. The problem with, with this pattern is that, you know, if the, the speed in which I can write, in which I can uh, handle my HTTP request coming in is higher than the speed at which I can write logs out, Okay, I am in big trouble because if I receive more HTTP, if I produce more HTTP requests, then more logs to, to write that the speed at which my receiver will can handle them. This means that my I will have a memory buildup for my logs in my system, in my in my in my in my operating system, in my uh, process, or I need to slow down my process. There's no way, any way out of this. Okay. It, it, either I'm sl I'm slowing down the process, or I am, uh, and with a, with a big memory buildup, or both. Even you know, I build, I fill up my my memory with logs, and at some point uh, the system crashes or whatever because it cannot write them out. And e most people don't really even think this can be a problem. Okay, it's uh, they just log add more log lines, and you know because they work in whatever field that they want to have a lot of log lines. And this means, however, this means that you doesn't work because it's uh, you you end up being in uh, things become uh, uh, are in an uncontrollable spiral to some extent because your input is in, so you basically you have you are enabling your users to create a denial of service attack against you because your logging can is not as fast so logging needs to be fast. Or needs to be slow, okay, but block the number, the, the amount of requests that are being processed, okay. Um, and uh, uh, are the most logging frameworks for near, for a Node do not offer you the flexibility to configure and tune those two behaviors. So you can have 
uh, in in Node, you can have asynchronous. Uh, uh, you can log in to log to standard output or to a file both synchronous with Pino. You can do it with both synchronously and asynchronously. So it means that I'm blocking my main thread up until the uh, uh, the data has been passed down to the uh, uh, to the operating system. It does not do an F sync, but it's passed down to the operating system. Or I can wait, for example, on the, or uh, uh, it just said, well, put it there, start buffering it, and flush it out whenever you have time. There is also offer also offer some uh, flexibility in which, oh, buffer up to a point. If it's over a certain threshold, stop buffering. We're not into like. We don't want to use more than X amount of memory, okay? And uh, uh, Pin offers you all this range of flexibility to to control your logging, to tune your logging uh, your logging production. So um, on top of that, we also recently added uh, a system to do multi-threaded logging. So very often you need to send when you receive the logs from from your server, you need to send them to Elasticsearch or CloudWatch or um, whenever, wherever you want to send them, uh, Sentry or LogRocket or what, wherever you want to send them. To be honest, a lot of people send the logs to to their decision. Well, somebody, some of the funniest one is Syslog. You know, you don't imagine how many people use the Syslog stuff. And I'm just like, how come Splunk? Okay, Splunk is a thing. Okay, it's um, I don't know. I have I work in the enterprise in the enterprise world, so I know a lot of these logging uh, these logging problems. So. Uh, and you probably know too, right, Ben? You know a thing or two about logging. Uh, I, 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 sus- I, I, highly sus- I, 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 I have, uh, I am a fellow lumberjack, so to speak. That's what we. <laughs> you see, yeah, sometimes. exactly. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, basically, in order to support that pattern, we implemented this system of multi-threaded logging. So uh, the main process: write the logs to uh, some, uh, so to a shared array buffer, and then those logs are then picked up by the uh, by the writer. And these then ship them externally. Uh, the, re- the fundamental reason that we can use, we need to use two threads. Uh, one, it's because we don't want the main thread to be uh, uh, to b- um, delaying the response to the end users to uh, because of this uh, uh, additional I/O uh, due to the logging uh, thread. But the second one is uh, to handle crashes. So if you're doing asynchronous logging, you want to. If your process crash, you want to send all the log. The latest, the most important logs are the ones that are the latest that have led to the crash. But if you're doing asynchronous logging, those logs are gone because you can't. They have not been sent. And when it crashes, it's gone. It's it's, it's done. It's not there anymore. Okay. So you need to lead leave the process some time to ship these things out. With uh, uh, this multi-threaded system is actually really great because uh, you can the second thread essentially monitors the first one so that uh, uh, it's if the first one dies, it will tell the second thread, oh, I'm dead, and it will start flashing all the logs, uh, doing as, even I, asynchronous I.O., so it can call your external API and doing whatever you want, but even if the main event loop is dead. So this happens automatically. You can call process.exit, and the secondary thread will keep going up until it's, it's finished, which is really really nice uh, and uh, uh, something that is fundamental for a synchronous logging tool taking a step back what led you to want to build fastify like how did you get started why uh so the first one is so uh, i started working on it in 2016 i did i i built pinum so i was doing some consulting with clients and i've seen this problem with uh, with logging these massive problems with logging so i started working with pino uh, and uh, I built Pino. And then the next button, uh, the next main button that I saw in applications was uh, Express. Mm. And then I decided, oh, no, no, this is too complex. I don't want to build another web framework. Okay. And then I was saying, well, if I'm going to build another web framework, I will, I will need to start buying, building another web framework if I can convince some other human being to build it with me. And uh, it's uh, this is where Fastify is different from a lot of the other web frameworks. All the other web frameworks were started by some, some when started or are maintained by some sort of benevolent dictator. 
and it's more or less they are very close to a one man show and uh, uh, with fastify instead fastify is open so fastify uh, was started because uh, i was able to convince somebody else to do it to build it with me so in fact as you probably have shown fastify i'm not the first committer of fastify so somebody else uh, thomas is so to, to clarify, i had the idea but thomas did the, the most uh, more more of the implementation than me uh, uh, I did a fair chunk. I, I, I did probably the hardest parts, but he did he did a fair chunk of, of it. So um, anyway, that's the, that's the thing. Okay, so I started we started building Fastify when we get to a certain point, and uh, that was uh, uh, but nobody cared about what we have done for 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 a few more years. Okay, so. Uh, Part of the breeze increase in popularity in Fastify is because we have been pushing out releases every week, every other week for the last few years. We have 15 contributors, so there is a very huge momentum behind the community, and uh, which is great because things keeps improving and improving and improving without big investment from companies. Well, every company is a little bit maybe chipping in, but not you know, with some, oh, you know, let's do some bug fixing. Oh, I have a bug. Um, so I am very ruthless on, on that side. We have very ruthless as a community on that side of things. If you're using the framework, you are responsible for its maintenance. Happy days. It's up to you. So you're using the framework. You are responsible for its maintenance as well. So if you have a bug, you have uh, the responsibility to maintain the, uh, the framework as well, which makes it super good from a, a community perspective. And so... What's in the future? What, what does the future look like for Fastify? Um, and what are, what are you most excited about? And what's what's on the roadmap? We are shipping uh, Fastify uh, v4 soon. As I said, it's going starting going into when we start going into the release candidate phase. Uh, it has uh, a brand new TypeScript system in it. Uh, that will enable you to define this to, to define the schema for your uh, 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 query strings and uh, bodies and headers and all those things, and automatically have it automatically inferred in your, the types of your of your application when you are coding, so that you don't need to type things. And uh, this is one of what's one of the major re feature requests from people. And uh, the experience will be pretty nice, to be honest. Uh, I just I tested it, and it's like, whoa! I didn't know TypeScript could do this. And by the way, it's not. It it it, it was not long ago that it couldn't. Okay, so to be clear, it's TypeScript is evolving as well. But we have uh, thanks to Sinclair, one of the collaborators, he's done a phenomenal job at implementing that feature. It also came with a, with a completely brand new error handling system. Uh, uh, we have improved the performance of the of the router and also of the framework itself. So um, it's uh, uh, all around a better. It's uh, the the thing the bit that ex excites me the most actually is probably the error handling because I've done a complete rewrite of how we handle errors. It's much more robust now than it was before. So and more and way more flexible. So pretty big pretty big deal. Awesome. Well, Matteo, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been very interesting learning about um, Pino and Fastify and hearing about your opinions of ORMs. <laughs> I enjoyed that. So thanks for joining us. And um, for anyone else out there who wants to check out Fastify, uh, what's the URL? Is it just Fastify, fastify.com? Um, Fastify.io, not Fastify.com. That was taken. Fastify.io. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe one day you'll get the .com, but for now, the IO will have to suffice. And, yeah, um, we also just... have the .dev, so if you prefer okay. the, .dev, yep. the .dev one. We, we need to migrate to the .dev one, but, you know, not enough time in the day to do those kind of maintenance tasks. So, Fair enough. Well, thanks again for joining us, and take care. Bye. Bye-bye.